But how would they prepare? They were supposed to get a lamp. We, if you read Exodus 12, we don't have time. I'm not teaching on that today. Exodus 12. Let me read it because we have guests here so they may teach it in their countries. Exodus 12, you can read, for example, verse 5, verse 7. Look at this. Verse 5. Exodus 12. The animals you choose must be year old male without defect. Underline without defect. They are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides of the doorpost and the, on the door frames in the houses in which they live. I want to live there. And then down there, of course, they say bread without yeast. Eat it roasted. Eat bitter herbs. Hallelujah. Now, when you go on down in Exodus 12, he says, do this as a lasting ordinance. Always keep remembering this. Teach your children, even when you enter Israel, when you are so modern, you are such a high-tech country with the best medical system in the world, the best lawyers in the world, the best economy in the world, the best scientists in the world, when you reach there. But don't forget this. He told them. But this one, don't forget. Teach it to your children and the children's children as a lasting ordinance, covenant between me and you. To remember the day I delivered you from slavery at the midnight hour. Hallelujah. So when you come to Israel, they call it Pesach. Meaning Passover. You see that? In Hebrew. When that Pesach is coming, what is most important is the first, the first dinner is seven days. The first dinner is called Seder and the seventh dinner, the last dinner when you're breaking out now. Everybody prepares for that dinner. You see that? Way in advance, months in advance. Because they know they don't want the midnight hour to get them wrong. You see that? In that house, in the Jewish home, anything that ever touched yeast, anything that ever touched bread with yeast, do you hear me? You buy from the bakery, it's buffalo. It's bread, it's a loaf with yeast. Eh? You might microwave it. You might cut it on the cutting board using a knife. You might bake it. The Jewish woman likes baking her bread, her own bread. So she uses yeast there, you know. Whether it's an oven she used. Anything that ever touched yeast is thrown out to the garbage. Nobody heard me here. Anything that ever touched yeast in that house. Whether it's a new microwave. Whether it's a nice clock on the wall in the kitchen. Whether it's in the dining room, there is a TV, a flat screen, but there they used to put bread near it there. Whether it's an oven, whether it's a clock, a TV in the kitchen, whatever it is, it is loaded on the pickup, thrown in the garbage dump. They really clean up their homes from yeast. Did somebody hear me? It stunned me. I was shocked at first. First time I was shocked. Because the garbage was full, sofa sets, nini, everything, that what they used, anything that touched yeast. No? It was so full that the highest business in Israel at such a time is the business of garbage collection. During that time, I knew that there would be no bread in the shops. You see that? So that's why I was upset. All foreigners used to be upset, you know. During this time, it was difficult to find bread. There is what we call matzah, which is bread without yeast. That is the only bread being sold everywhere in Israel. Everyone, and that bread has no taste. That is the bread God was telling Egypt to eat, Israel to eat in Egypt. He was telling them to prepare for the midnight hour, you have to eat that bread which is tasteless. After Joseph had died, and slavery came now, in Goshen, their slave masters were very bad. They built the pyramids. Their backs were being whipped. You see that? Very cruel. But they were going every day to that workplace because they had to earn bread, some bread for the family. Right? 
They lived their years, their many lives and many years working for bread with yeast. When they reached home, they trembled. Eh? Hey, everybody, now the family, you know, the slave family, you know. You have to break a bit, give to everybody, share, pass it around piece by piece. You know, they have brought food home. The slave family, you see that? But when God said that now they would not eat bread with yeast, they trembled more. They panicked. They said, hey, but that one we're not used to. That one is not tasty. They're used to tasty. Right? God told them, get off the yeast. So in Israel, that's what they do. I was shocked. You find new TVs, new DVD players, new flat screen TVs, new what, new computers, laptops, what, thrown out. I say, why would someone throw such a thing? It touched yeast. It ever touched yeast. You see that? However expensive it is, The same thing the Lord is telling the church. Now that the midnight hour is coming. However expensive it is. However much your life is tied to it. You know the way pastors get tied to some woman in the church. Eh? A woman who is really shelling good money. Eh? You understand that? He cannot even rebuke her dressing. She's always going around with pastor. You see that eh? Until people are just saying, just a moment, this is not right. You go to pastor's office, she's the one doing things there, you know. Pastor's wife is where now? Where is the role of the pastor's wife? People have started to complain, you see that? She's the one driving pastor's car to go uh, uh, change oil. Huh? And people say, this thing here, this thing is not the right thing. You see that? But he cannot rebuke even her dressing. Because she is shelling. You see that? She is, he, Pastor says, those are the few sheep I have. The no-no. They call it the fat sheep. Eh? The ones, you know, when they touch the fat, you don't feel the bones. Eh? Touch the back of the sheep. They are the ones who are keeping me going. He says like that. And yet there is a last full relationship going on there which makes the wife uncomfortable. You see that? The Lord is saying, however sweet it has been, out to the garbage now. Let the midnight not find you with that yeast. Okay? Let the midnight hour not find you with that yeast. Oh, these are the main supporters of the church. Okay, if they are the supporters of the church, then let the Holy Spirit use you to purify them. So they can be holy, dress holy, walk holy, preach holy. Let, let the, co convert them. Then deliver them for Christ. If they're the ones he brought to support you. But don't let sin and yeast get an excuse of creeping around this word. Do you hear me? And then pastor is now compromising his word. Pastor is now... You see a man has changed completely. He's not the man you knew. Do you hear me? Now he's talking more of other things, buying land, uh, property, uh, his special offering for pastor, whatever. Nini, nini, those things now are happening. But that is the yeast. You that preach, that's the yeast. Okay? In Israel, they throw, they just close their, it's like close your eye and throw. You understand? And they begin from scratch. And I used to ask, well, now how is this? Talk to me about this thing. He says, no, because, you know, we don't take chances. Because anything could have touched yeast, especially in the kitchen area. Just get rid of it. You see that? Even in the dining area. Even in the place you put bread, whatever it is. But, but you know, we look at it positively. Because it gives us a chance to build the house anew, he said. Did you hear that? He said, for so long I, I was looking at those sofas for many years. I was tired a bit. You hear that? The church also, for so long you have looked at the same countenance. The same features are in the church. Same conduct, same worship. You can almost come and predict what is going to happen after this worship. What the pastor is going to stand and say. What is going to, you know. Yeah? But the church needs now 